first of all, let me say this. Gonzaga uh, is a great team. Mark Few it should be in the Hall of Fame. There's no reason to even wait. He should be in the Hall of Fame. Um, uh, they're a first-class program, and that was a great win for the Tigers. Uh, number one, that win was based on guts. We had to will it out and gut it out against an, a, an elite team. And our guys, a few things. They, from our loss for SMU or our loss for Cincinnati or Connecticut, we were able to learn from that and not have the avalanche when they punched us in the mouth or had a run on us. We were able to stay the course, stay the game plan, and just let things work itself out, and that happened. We continued to defend, and we did a great job taking the three-point shot out. We had to gut it out. The fan base gutted it out with us. The fans were tremendous, were tremendous. The loudest I've ever been here, this is my fifth year as a head coach, one as an assistant, so loudest I've ever heard it. And, uh, and it being at game day, and then having that 73 team there, you know, to be able to win in front of that 73 team was, was really, really special as well. And we're, we're blessed to have, have OJ from, from the American, who's one of the good men in, in all of sports, and uh, he's here with us as well, too. Talk about Joe's block on the seven one, and it really just seemed to. I turn think it, I think it was like a twenty six twelve run after that. I mean twenty five twelve. Yeah, I mean twenty nine twelve. Yeah, Joe's block was amazing, and Joe Joe found some ways. He did a great job on Pangos too. I mean, our whole team did a great job defensively, but that was a huge block. I kept telling our guys, guys, I don't care if they hit every bucket a two point shot. We're going to find a way to win the game. Do not let them get threes. You have to take the three out. They hit a one off the out of bounds of, first, of the beginning of the first half, and they hit one the very beginning of the second half. Other than that, we were terrific. We didn't get sucked in defensively. That was the big thing. We were able to stay at home on the shooters all throughout, and uh, uh, defensively we were great, and Joe's block set the, set the tone. How does he make that play against the 7-1 guy? Hey, Joe Jackson, Chris Crawford, Trey Draper, that senior class there, that's his 100th win and uh, as a senior class. And, and that's the eighth straight, I think, senior class to have 100 wins here at the Memphis program, which is a tremendous stat. Plus, it was Joe's birthday. So uh, Joe made that block. That was a high-level elite play. And that game was an elite game. That was a high-level, intense, elite game. And that might have been as... I, that even and it, because and especially because we won, but that was about as a fun of game I've been involved in. You know, that, I really had a good time with that game. The crowd was the loudest I've ever heard it here. Josh, as you said, the perimeter defense guarding the three was really good, but they were getting inside your interior defense, which has had problems at times, struggled. But in the last six or seven minutes of that game, you, you really clamped down. What was the difference in the way you defended inside in the last six, seven minutes? Well, I, I just think we, we, we did a good job. I mean, look, here's the thing. I kept saying, hey, we're going to, if we give up some twos, that's okay. We cannot give up any threes. If we're going to, we're going to, we're not going to hold them scoreless, but we're going to, if we're giving up anything, it's going to be twos. And we just, we kept staying with the game plan. We did not relax. We just said, hey, this is what we're doing. If they beat us, they're going to beat us with twos. And look, we held them to 25 points the first half, 29 the second half. Part of it, we, they did a great job against us defensively. And then, you know, last, you know, last four or five minutes, we made some plays down the stretch. Michael Dixon made some big plays down the stretch. Uh, I thought Chris Crawford was very, very steady as a point guard. And then, uh, uh, you know, Dom Woodson came in. You know, he fouled him. He did not intentionally try to hurt him at all. Thank the good Lord that the kid came back and he's, held, he's okay. Uh, Ren Baker told me that um, you know he he'll be able to play next game um, on the flagrant two, so um, <clears throat> so he'll be back. But it was not in, he did not intentionally try to to hurt him at all, and he actually went to go give him a five and lift him up off the floor um, af after on that too. But Nick David Pelham was a little with his knees; he was just not he looked a little hesitant. But Nick King came in and gave us a huge spark, a huge spark, 50-50 balls, all kinds of plays. And uh, that was a that was a that was for my assistant coaches who, who made that told me we should, this is what we should do and we did it and so that's a credit to my assistant coaches. Next, coach, just talk about the resiliency of this. Coach, talk about the resiliency of this team based on the way you know the UConn game win and the Cincinnati game win and then also you know just how proud you are of Michael Dixon for the way he played down the stretch. Yeah, well, again, like I said, the thing Grant is what we did well is we didn't have the avalanche happen on one of those runs, which has happened to us. Um, and anyone who doesn't think SMU is good, by the way, beat, beat Cincinnati by 
21. So when I said afterward how good SMU is and people looked at me like I had seven eyes, well, maybe now say, okay, maybe Coach is right. SMU is pretty good. But, um, <clears throat> but they, they, we learned from some of those past losses where we didn't have the avalanche of the run. And we did a great job in Orlando where same thing, but we hadn't done that like that since Orlando where we didn't handle runs well. And uh, we found a way to handle the run uh, in this game that when they punched us early, we just stayed the course. And I kept saying it every time out, guys, we just got to chip away. Do not give any threes. Whatever you do, if they beat us, they're going to beat us with twos because we're going to at some point get going offensively. And, um, <clears throat> and you know, we scored enough to 60 is not even a lot, but we had to grind it out. And this was a grind out game. Michael Dixon Grant was really big down the stretch defensively was really big defensively down the stretch came up with some loose balls and uh and made some big buckets too Next. I mean, you talk about that three you know you guys were down by nine 52 made a big three it looked like it was potentially an avalanche an avalanche coming That's yeah three. it was huge i mean that 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 got us back that that block started the you know the run the 29 12 run so um, and then Mike, from there, we just chipped away. But that block gave us the energy that we needed. And then when you made that three, it gives us some energy from there. And, um, you know, we were able to find a way to get a win. We gutted it out. We had to gut it out against an elite team in Gonzaga, a top 25 team, a top 25 RPI team. We had to gut it out. And in game day, just to be able to win here with game day, finally, again, we, I think we've lost the last two game days with Memphis, so good to get that. I think I'm an offer with Jay Billis in town, so finally I was able to get a win with Jay Billis doing the game. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, because that might have been the next stat coming down the point, that Josh is 0 for 6 with Jay Billis at the game, so I'm glad we are able to get that off too. So, yeah, but, it, but um, that's where we're at. Uh, touch on Nick Nick King's resilience this year, and you know, kind of what he's gone through having you know not played consistent minutes. But when it mattered most today, he stepped up. He he, he was huge. He had so many big plays, 50-50 balls, loose balls, rebounds, and he had to stay ready. And he's been working hard, and he stayed ready, and he came in and did his job, and he flat out helped us win the basketball game. Is that is that the performance you kind of expected from him all year? Like yeah. No, but, but, but his energy, he, he was like what, what David Pellin was to us earlier in the year. He was what DJ Steffens did for us last year. I mean, he was an energy changer tonight. He was an energy giver. He changed the game based on energy. Talk about that uh, interaction with Robert Kirby there at one point on the bench and just uh, the intensity that goes through a game like Yeah, that. no, I mean, well, Kirk, I mean, it was Kirby scout, and he did a great job. And it's just, you know, I mean, look, there was, it's the heat of the moment. You're just coaching, and you're just, you know, it was nothing. I love my staff. Yeah. Well, no, it's just it's intense. We're 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 just it wasn't there was no arguing. There was just we were both yelling to the guys to get the job done instead of yelling at the players. We we're probably yelling at the I was yelling at the staff, and um, uh, but you know that's just uh, it's just that's just the game of basketball. It's intense. Game of basketball is about energy. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Great win. Uh,